سو بسم اللہ الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ سید المرسلین محمد الامین اما بعد بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سو ان دا نیم آف اللہ آئی وانٹ ٹو شیئر ود یو ایز آئی ہیو ناؤ کلیکٹیڈ مینی سینگس اینڈ اسٹیٹمنٹس اباؤٹ دا پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا رائزنگ آف دا سن فرام دا ویسٹ and the statements of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the same issue and as have i have done this and especially i used the article written by brother muhammad uh that i showed last time as kind of like a uh a place to start off my research and look into other things that go around this it, there is clearly it seems to me that uh there is clearly it seems like two risings of the west okay so let me share with you some of the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that might shed light into all of this and there's so much to say because as i dug deeper and deeper and deeper i even got into how the quran describes the movement of this of the of the sun from the east to the west because the quran you know the in, in the sun does not always rise in the west and set in the east uh if you know that there are six places in the world where the sun does not rise or set okay in the north pole and in the south pole for example there's two of them and there's some of the countries that are on the like near canada and norway some of these countries the sun doesn't rise or set and same thing in the south pole I don't know how uh, our brothers who are flat earthers answer that question because uh, how does the sun not rise or set which is a phenomenon that's well known uh, on these two opposite uh, sides of the earth whether you say it's a global or whether it's flat so the only answer is it has to be global this is my opinion and Allah knows best and so anyway so now uh, let us now Uh, look at what the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay uh, about the rising of the west as a what as a minor sign to the day of judgment so let's start there inshallah so the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam in awwala ayat khurujan the first of the signs of its coming out tulu ash-shams min maghribiha okay uh is the rising of the sun from its setting place the prophet said it would be an awwal ayatan khuruj khurujan tulu ash-shams min maghribiha that amongst the first signs of its coming out is tulu ash-shams is the rising of the sun from its setting place meaning and then what you will always notice is that the khuruj of dabba uh the coming out of dabba is also mentioned in conjunction with what is always mentioned in conjunction with the sun coming out from the west in the hadith literature we have to talk one day about this word khuruj this is a very important word because the prophet uses it very often sallallahu alaihi wasallam but today i'm going to dis- uh, dis- uh, over skip this discussion of khuruj and how the prophet has used it but the main point i wanted to make here is amongst the first signs okay is what is the sun coming out from the west whereas if you look at how imam nawawi in his riyadhus salihin he has put it that it is amongst the last signs let me share that with you too so and clearly there is sayings of the prophet that when the sun rises from the west people will see it and they will believe meaning they were not believing before And then there are sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they see the sun rise from the west they will start reading Quran. Okay? So they already believed and they started to read Quran when they saw 
the sunrise from the west. If it is in the last phase, then in the last phase, there will be no believers because the believers, a wind will come and take all the believers. And that is when the Iblis, the Prophet said, وسلم, I'm going to show all of this. The Prophet said, when Iblis sees the sun rise from the west, he will go into sujood and he will say to Allah, Allah, let me do sujood to whoever you will because he'll know his time is out. Time's out. Time's up. So there are so at that last time, at the last phase, when the sun rises from the west, there will be no believers and then they'll want to believe. So how does Imam Nawi resolve this issue is like this. Let me share with you. So Imam Nawi starts his book Riyad al-Salihin with the chapter of Niya intention. And the second chapter, as you can see, is the Bab al-Tawbah, is the chapter of repentance. Now, what is the link between the two chapters is that niya, intention, and tawbah are essentially the same thing. Tawbah is a type of intention. So, the tawbah is turning to Allah, and it's the intention to turn to Allah sincerely, and the bab niya is the same thing. So, the two are interrelated. In fact, all of these chapters of Riyadh al-Salihin are interrelated, but inshallah, one day when Allah allows me... Uh, I will talk about the relationship uh, between these. So I just want to share with you now when up to what time, okay, uh, up to what time does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allow the individual, the individual, allow the individual to do tawbah? As you know, even Fir'aun, he believed. And Allah said, Al -an, now you believe? Before you were disobeying me. So at that time his iman is not accepted. So the Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu said, Inna Allah azza wa jal yaqbalu tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts tawbah, uh, tawbah tul abd, the repentance of the servant, ma lam ya, yargar, as long as his, right, his soul does not reach the uh, throat. Okay. When he sees the soul reaching the throat and coming out, when he re up till this point, you have toba. But after this point, there's no toba. So Imam Nawi, in the collective sense, meaning for the whole of dunya, man taba qabla shams min maghrabiha taballah alayh. Whoever of the people of the world collectively people as a people, if did they do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the sun rises from its west, if they brought iman before the sun rises from the west, then Allah will forgive them. And so let me now share with you two sayings of the Prophet that you can match now. The Prophet said that if you see the day of judgment and you have seeds in your hand, plant it. Because you already have Iman before that Day of Judgment starts. So this is just an example. The Prophet, Just plant it, right? Because you already had Iman. But if you brought Iman after this point, it doesn't count. So the Imam Nawi brings this point that the Ghargar of Dunya, so to say, the moment where the, the soul is at the throat and you can see the soul leaving the body, because when the sun rises from the west, people are going to know the earth is just about to be destroyed. And these will be people who will not be believing. And this is very clear in the ahadith about the fact that a wind will come and take the people who all the, the wind will come and take all the believers. And then this will be amongst the last signs, according to some of the scholars. Okay, But then this also contradicted the hadith that we just mentioned where the companion of the Prophet mentions that the Prophet ﷺ said that this will be amongst the first signs. So perhaps if we could put the ahadith in two categories and then we can see a clear understanding there is a rising of the sun from the west in the end, in the very end end, and there is a rising of the sun in as a minor sign which has already happened as I've already discussed in my last lecture. Okay, because of the international uh, date line that the British government put over the world and countries that were considered that these are the last, you know, uh, when it became the 
first to see the rise of the sun, now this time in the west instead of the east by changing arbitrary lines. Let me just keep it at that and I'll discuss that maybe more in just a bit. So again, the Prophet Nabi Muhammad وسلم, has been reported to have said by Abdullah bin Umru, in awwal ayat khurujan, amongst the first signs of its coming out, tulu ash-shams min maghrabiha, is the rising of the sun from its west. Okay? And then you also have this, because you know the majority of the ahadith, they say what? After the sun rises from the west, what will happen? Tawbah is not accepted. But let me share with you uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu an in the book of Tirmizi, or this is a Rawahul Muslim I'm looking at over here, but I know there's a narration in Tirmizi also. Okay. Uh, the Prophet said, Three things when they come out, it will not benefit the person of their iman. Okay, so there are three things when that happens, the tawbah is not, the iman will not benefit you. Tulu ash-shams min maghrabiha the rising of the sun from its setting place, Dajjal and Dabbatul Ard. So these three things, when they happen, what will happen? That uh, the your Iman will not benefit you. And if you look at the book of Tirmizi, uh, this is in the book, this is actually Sahih Muslim, I'm sorry. ثَلَاثٌ إِذَا خَرَجْنَا لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا وَلَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ Right? So there will be no benefit, almost like there's no uh, no acceptance of Tawbah. And uh, uh, the Prophet said, Baridu uh, bi a'mali sitta. The Prophet said, Hurry up to good deeds before six things, six things happen. And the first thing the Prophet mentions in majority of these narrations, by the way, is Tulu ash-shams min maghrabiha, the rising of the sun from its west. The first thing, the Prophet has never mentioned this as amongst the last things. He's always mentioned this as amongst the first things. And then, uh, over here, uh, what does it mean that your iman or will not benefit you, or that your tawbah will uh, not uh, uh, be accepted? And some of the scholars have combined these both aspects: your tawbah will not be accepted, and your iman will not benefit you as one. While I would suggest the one that your iman will not benefit you, your being Muslim will not benefit you, has to do with the minor sign. And the your tawbah will not be accepted it has to do with the major sign, but Allah knows best. Okay, let's actually get deeper into this now. Okay, but as you know, so there are some things that show it'll be amongst the first signs, and now let me share with you the other side a little bit. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Okay, لا تقوم الساعة. The hour will not come hatta until tulu ash-shams min maghrabiha until the sun rises from its setting place. Wa idha talaat and when it rises, waraha nas amanu ajmaun. The people will see it and they will all believe. Dalika hina that will be the time la yanfau nafsan imanan. That will be the time where your iman will not benefit you, meaning your tawbah will now not be accepted. Okay. And so this is one of the narrations that show it as the very last thing that will happen where the whole world will see and the whole world will believe despite being in disbelief at that time. So Imam Nawi writes about that, okay? Hatta yursilullahu ta'ala rihan. Okay, wait, let me. Thumma ya'ti marhala. And then there is a stage at the end of the end after the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam at the very end. Thumma ya'ti marhala ukhra. فَيَنْقِصُ عَدَدَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The number of the believers will dis decrease. حَتَّى يُرْسِلُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى رِيحًا Until Allah sends a wind. 
تَقْبَدْ أَرْوَاهُهُمْ That will take their arwah, meaning the Muslimin will die. وَلَا يَبْقَى شِرُ وَلَا يَبْقَى إِلَّا أَشْرَارَ الْخَلْقِ And nothing will remain except for the worst of the people. These are those people that even shaitan will be surprised at how bad they are. Okay? فَعَلَيْهِمْ تَقُومُ السَّعَى And the hour will be established upon these people. It is these people that are going to see the sun from the west. And these will be the worst of the people. And when they see the sun from the west, at that time they'll claim to believe and Allah will not accept it. Okay, and so an Anas radiyallahu an an Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam قال لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقال في الأرض الله الله. The Prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the hour will not be established until there are people on earth saying Allah Allah. So the, when the hour happens, it'll be people. The hour will not happen on people who say Allah Allah Allah. But when they see the sun rising from the west, it'll not benefit them. So it's, it won't be counted for them. Uh, and then the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna min ashrar nas yudrikuhu sa'a. The worst of the people, the hour will occur upon them. Okay? Uh, so now, this is uh, what will be happening. Uh, now, so there is that the, some of the ahadiths point to at the very end there will be the rising of the sun from the west and there are other ahadiths that point to the fact there will be a rising of the sun as a minor sign so now let us look deeper into this okay another narration that shows that the the that the, it will be amongst the major last last things when abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu also reported man taba qabla tulu' ash-shams min maghrabiha qabbala allah minhu Whoever does tawbah before the rising of the sun from the west, Allah will accept it from him. Now, there's another narration that also shows that this will be amongst the last natural phenomenons. Okay, where uh, the uh, it's in the Sahihain, meaning it's muttafuqun alay. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tadri ayna tazhab ash-shams ida ghrabat. Do you know where the sun goes when it is when it sunsets? قُلْتُ لَا أَدْرِي So the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I don't know. Okay. And this is Abu Dhar Ghafari, I believe. And قَالَ إِنَّهَا تَنْتَحِدُونَ الْعَرْشِ So the, uh, the sun moves until it comes to the arsh. Okay. So it will be allowed to do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ and this will happen until it is said to the sun, and this will happen until it is fearful that it will be said, you go back to where you came, where you came from, okay? That uh, that will be that time where your iman will not be of any benefit to you. And then again, another narration that makes it amongst the first of the signs. The Prophet said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى ترى أشر آيات The hour will not come until you see ten signs. تلو الشمس من مغربها Until you see the sun rise from the west. Okay. Now, uh, this is the interesting hadith, right? That everybody has it established that this will happen amongst the last things. Now, I want to focus on what happened in 2011. And what the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says about the minor sign of the of the sun rising from the west. Okay, so before I go into this, let me share one thing with you. So it's in, it's it's important for you to understand this, so that we understand uh, how these two relate. So because I've already talked about this in some detail in my last videos, so uh, Samoa and this other skip a day for dateline change. Now to skip a day, you have to skip three nights. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu when the three nights will be skipped, and when you will, that will happen without seeing the stars. This is what the Prophet said, without seeing the stars. How do you skip three days? Well, as the clock struck midnight, as December 29th ended, meaning midnight, okay? So they fast forwarded from this night, meaning the December 29th, to 
the night of uh, they skipped Friday, okay, and they went straight to December 31st. So that was three nights in one, okay. So as the clock struck midnight, okay, because they made a date line change for better business and this artificial spellbound timeline that's been put around the globe by the British Empire, okay. So as this as the clock struck midnight, as this, as 29th December ended. Samoa and Tukalu, I don't know how to say it, fast forwarded to December 31st, missing out on 30th of December completely. So a Friday, a Juma was missed in this island where there are about 200 Muslims. Okay. And so now what does the Prophet ﷺ say in this regard? So the Prophet says, قَوْلُ تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةِ حَتَّى تَكُونَ uh, uh, in another narration, the Prophet said three nights. But in this narration, the Prophet says, the length of that night will be like two nights. And in the people that are praying, they're like, wait, how are we going to deal with this? And so the Prophet describes this. And the Prophet says, at that time, that your Iman will not benefit you. Just like he said, when the Dajjal comes out, your Iman will not benefit you. When Dabbatul Ard comes out, your Iman will not benefit you. When the sun comes out from the west, it will not benefit you. So it's a general statement that there are, as you get closer to the hour, your Iman will begin to affect you less and less until that moment of coming down of Isa والسلام, and the rise of the, the, the Jama'ah of the Mahdi and then at that time Allah will allow all the barakah to come at that time but I'm not going to talk about that right now okay uh, the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet says إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَتَحَ بَابًا قَبْلَ الْمَغْرِبِ أَرَادَهُ سَبْعُونَ أَبْعَامًا لِتَوْبًا and this is another narration that's very interesting. The Prophet says, Allah has opened the door uh, before that time, 70 years before that time where the sun will rise from the west. But I don't want to talk about that right now. I just want to stick to the topic of the two, the major and the minor. Again, another. Laylatan ala nasi laylatul adal thalatha layal. Min uh, In this narration, the Prophet says that one night will be like three nights. And you can make the argument uh, for both cases depending upon how you're looking at it. Okay. Uh, uh, and so there will be a people at that time because at the end, no one will be believing, right? And they'll see that and then they'll believe. But over here, what happens? Yakumun ahdakum faqra'a hizbahu. People will get up at night and they'll they'll be worried about this change where they're going to miss Jum'ah, right? So they'll read from the Qur'an at that time. So this is amongst the minor signs where may, a few nights come into one night, two nights or three nights, right? And they will be believers and they will see that different uh, few nights have been made into one. and And this will happen. Not for the whole of mankind, but for that particular group of people that whom this happens to, which has already happened when they made this dateline change. And so now, when it goes midnight, they change their day with the West, okay, instead of with the East as it used to happen before, okay. Uh, and so the Prophet ﷺ says about this, uh, And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi the, the length of that night will be like two nights. Uh, and the there will be no stars in this in it, meaning there will be no like where you this will all happen without the night actually occurring without actually seeing stars so now uh it seems and allahu a'lam and allah knows best that this sign the minor sign of the sun rising from the west has already occurred 
on 2011 when they did this. And so now when they change the date line, the arbitrary date line, let me actually show this to you so you kind of like uh, get this. So this is the international date line that separates that this is how it was before, okay, before the change. So the uh, date line put Samoa on the eastern side of the date line. And then when they change this, now the new date, their new day would start from the west okay and so now they were put on the other side of the international uh, date line okay and th the the old is the old one you see is the 2011 date line so you can see that puts the uh, Samoa and the other islands on the east side okay and uh, the new, uh, the new, the new uh, uh, date line of 2012, right? Put them. Uh, they moved it to the east, and so the orange one is the new one, and the yellow one is the old one. Get it? So the old one put them with the east, and then they moved it. So now it is part of the west, and like this, three days became like one or two days became like one depending upon if you count the actual uh, one day at the end as 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 a day or not otherwise it'll be two or three depending upon how you count so this is uh, what uh, happened and so now as the clock struck midnight as 29 December ended Samoa and these islands fast forwarded to December 31st missing out on the 30th of December totally now as a summary let me again mention the hadith of the prophet sallallahu that iblis will do say let me do sujood to anyone i want to do sujood that will happen when all the believers have passed away anyone who says allah allah has been raised and the arwah have all been taken only the worst of the people are left on the earth and at that time when he sees it he will want to do such that and anyone who else sees it at that time, they'll all believe. But that'll be like Imam Nawi in his Kitab al-Tawbah of Riyad al-Salihin has indicated that that will be like the gharghar moment where it's too late to believe. But the Prophet also said that your Iman will not benefit you when the Dabbatul Ard comes out, when the Jal comes out, when uh, the sun from the west uh, comes out from its rising place. Also, so you have those traditions, but then you have other traditions in which the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this will happen without seeing the stars. This will happen when not every, but people that experience this, they will read their Quran and it'll be made three, three nights into one. The Prophet also indicated and the companions of the Prophet indicated this will be amongst the first of the signs of the Day of Judgment first of these signs and so it's always mentioned amongst the first signs generally speaking so there are narrations that show that this will happen one time which has already happened and that happened without seeing the stars it happened to a group of people and that's a sign of the coming of the day of judgment this is the coming events casting their shadows at the very least but it actually did happen and then there will be a final one, a real one. The first one, you can say, is the rise of Western civilization, as some people have put it, right? Some of the scholars of ours and teachers of ours have put it. But there is the rise of the Western civilization, where the sun rise, they, you know, they, they, they change the date lines as they please, put somebody in the Western side and make their dates change with that part of the world rather than the other part of the world, uh, the Eastern part of the world. So it does seem, when you look at all the narrations, that it seems like that this phenomenon will happen in its real physical phenomenon will happen at the end when there will be no believers. And the other narrations that show that it will happen to the believers, it will happen without seeing the, 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 the stars, right? All this will happen at a time where three nights will be made into one um, then uh, that will happen at a time where it seems like it's amongst the first signs, the rise of 
uh, this the situation that we're seeing. So, uh, you know, in 2011, what happened? So, and Allah knows best, but I think the ahadith fit this uh, point, uh, especially for me was significant the three nights or two nights becoming one. For me, significant was without these, the occurrence of the stars, without the experience of stars happening, um, and that these people will be reading part of the Quran. As this, so this will not happen at the time where there will be disbelievers. So these points make it uh, seem like, and Allah only Allah knows best. Uh, may Allah guide us to the right way of thinking and analyzing and observing and putting things together. Uh, it seems like this has already occurred uh, when they have put this artificial spellbound uh, timeline around the globe and then change it accordingly to who will be part of the West and who will be part of the East. And so this happened in 2011. All right, inshallah, uh, pray for me. Let's pray for everyone. May Allah help all of us. Jazakumullah khairan. I hope I was able to explain what I wanted to explain in a good way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.